Here's your wrestling news for October 16th, 2020. And your headlines for today include Daniel Bryan returns to WWE SmackDown this week. Ronda Rousey possibly worked out extension in WWE contract. Breaking news as WWE wrestler who is accused of leaking AEW spoilers revealed. Did WWE send a covert to AEW? WWE may be forced to strip Finn Balor of NXT title. Mustafa Ali is called names for belonging to a certain faith. Wrestlers react. Former WWE champion teases a return. Vince McMahon reportedly once tried and failed to get CM Punk to drink and more. We are kicking off today with tonight's SmackDown as the first post-draft edition of the blue brand will have a special return. On tonight's show, Daniel Bryan will appear, though it's unclear what he'll be doing in his first appearance in the Thunderdome. Bryan has had months off since Brie Bella gave birth to their second child, and the company have also kept busy selling their multi-million dollar home in Phoenix. Bryan's return isn't the only thing promised tonight, as the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns defends the Universal title against Raw's Braun Strowman, whilst the new SmackDown Tag Champions The Street Profits will defend their gold against Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler. Lars Sullivan will face Jeff Hardy in singles action, and it's clear that the first post-draft SmackDown is going to be a stacked show. Now, we previously reported that Ronda Rousey isn't expected back anytime soon, but that doesn't mean we've seen the last of her. While speaking to the New York Post, Paul Heyman commented on Rousey's contract, which reportedly ends in April, and raised a good point, saying, That's another funny thing about people who don't discuss their business in public forums. Everyone presumes that Ronda Rousey's contract expires at a certain time. I don't understand why people don't realize that perhaps, just perhaps, Ronda Rousey's contract has been extended or she has worked out a new deal and it would not benefit either WWE or Ronda Rousey to go public with that information. But why wouldn't people understand that it would be kept secret? The fact that Rousey was spotted sharing the ring with Teal Piper has added to the rumor mill, as well as Natalia recently training with a mystery person believed to be the baddest woman on the planet. We'll have to wait and see if WWE brings Rousey back to the ring, but if they do, it'll mean a heck of a lot more in front of live fans. One person we know fans will see a lot of is Big E, and whilst tonight's SmackDown will see the last match for the New Day as a whole, it's not all bad news. During Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer said that with Big E on his own on SmackDown, he's set to receive a main event babyface push, despite never being in that position before. It looks like Big E will be joining the Universal title hunt soon enough, and although his current singles push has proven to be popular, Jey Uso is expected to return to tag team action once Jimmy is back. We'll have to see what WWE has in store for Big E and his reported push, and with Universal Champion Roman Reigns amazing fans as a heel, it may be a matter of time before the two heavyweights collide. Over to AEW now, and whilst Eric Bischoff's appearance on the August 5th, 2020 Dynamite was huge, it would have been a bigger surprise if it hadn't been spoiled ahead of time. At the time, Chris Jericho laid down the law for who he described as an NXT reject, saying, Social media is a different ball of wax, though. I think the amount of people who are on social media is very small compared to the overall people watching. For example, when we had the debate and Eric Bischoff was announced on Reddit, and we know the spy is, by the way, oh we know, he'll never f be back in AEW. An NXT reject was a spy, so print that. There's no shortage of former NXT stars who have appeared in AEW, as Cesar Bonani was a member of the audience on an episode of Dynamite, Tino Sabatelli had a match on Dark as Sabi, and Tay Conti teamed with Anna Jay in the women's tag team tournament. According to Fightful, it was Sabatelli who gave out the Bischoff scoop, making him the aforementioned NXT reject, though they clarified that this isn't 100% confirmed, saying, We don't know if Sabatelli was actually leaking information from AEW, just that he's the person often referenced by those in AEW. Whether Sabi is guilty or not may never be known for sure, but ultimately, AEW are holding him responsible for this huge leak. Back to WWE now, and although the WWE has been trying to return to how things were before, don't expect to see any live wrestling for a long time. Whilst things are opening up in Florida and in other states, there's a while to go before the WWE can tour again, 
and according to WrestleVotes, there are no plans to make any kind of return to the normal house show schedule until at least 2022. This news follows on from reports that WWE will be staying in the Thunderdome even longer, as their original agreement has now been extended by a month, and there's new reports suggesting the Amway Center will be used for the rest of this year. Fans who have tickets already have had the dates of their events pushed back several times at this point, and it looks like there's no guarantee WWE will be rolling through your town anytime soon. Clearly, 2020 has been a tough year for WWE, but one person who's had a great time is SmackDown Women's Champion Bayley, who will be in an extra good mood tonight. That's because PWI have ranked the role model number one in their top 100 women wrestlers of the year, whilst Bayley's former best friend Sasha Banks took the number five spot. Whilst Bayley was pleased to take the top spot, she tweeted her anger over sharing the cover image with the boss, whom she'll face at Hell in a Cell with the SmackDown Women's title on the line. After over 500 combined days as the champion, Bayley's time with the gold may be numbered, but right now, the only number the role model cares about is being number one. Over to NXT next, and after Finn Balor's jaw was broken at TakeOver 31, there's some serious questions about his status as NXT champion. Earlier this week, Balor shared a photo of his very swollen face after having surgery, and during Wrestling Observer Live, Brian Alvarez noted that his condition may result in a second straight title forfeit. It is touch and go, this is a shoot. If he seems to be recovering rapidly, he will remain champion. If not, they will be forced to strip him of the title. Karrion Cross had to vacate the gold after he separated his shoulder during a match against Keith Lee and hopefully Balor will be able to avoid a similar fate, though the company is apparently keeping their options open. Earlier this year, Philip Thomas broke into the home of Sonya Deville with the attempt to kidnap her, and despite now being incarcerated, has found another way to torment the superstar. According to Wrestling Inc., Thomas gave Sonya's home address as his own, meaning all his mail has been directed there and we can't imagine what Deville must have thought when she saw Mal bearing the name of her attempted kidnapper. Fortunately, the proper authorities have corrected this issue, so she's not receiving his mail, though court records still show Thomas' address as Deville's residence. Thomas is facing several charges, including armed burglary of a dwelling, a felony which is punishable by life in prison, and this address change may be used in court as an example of further harassment. DeVille hasn't been on TV since her loser leaves WWE loss to Mandy Rose at SummerSlam, and whilst the pair recently patched things up on social media, fans may have to wait until this ordeal with Thomas is over to see the former MMA fighter return to the ring. Now, Mustafa Ali recently shocked the world by revealing himself as Retribution's leader, but some of the responses he's gotten haven't surprised the high flyer. On Twitter, one fan blasted Ali as a terrorist, saying that the company doesn't need any quote, anti-American crap, and speculated that the group will be killed off by the fiend and disbanded. Responding, Ali gave a simple, there it is, as he's been called a terrorist for being a Muslim throughout his entire career, whilst Mace of Retribution tweeted for the fan to delete his account, whilst Reckoning said that racism isn't a clever troll job. There's been nothing anti-American about Retribution, especially compared to prior factions such as the Un-Americans of 2002, and it's a real shame that Ali still has to put up with this sort of stuff in 2020. Now, WWE furloughed many people on April 15th and have let some, like Gerald Briscoe, go, but not everyone has been told their services are no longer needed. While speaking to Wrestling Inc., Shane Helms confirmed that he hasn't received the dreaded phone call yet, and said he's been keeping busy during his hiatus podcasting, something he's been doing for the past decade. Hopefully, the former Hurricane won't be let go from the company and will be able to return as a producer soon enough, though that all hinges on the company having more shows to put on, which will require more producers. From one former superstar to another now, as after reports that Eva Marie and Melina are returning, Victoria has teased coming back to WWE. Earlier this year, Victoria said she'd be open to returning to WWE or Impact if she could get her stuff in, and this week, she told fans to never say never in regard to a WWE return. It's possible that the former Women's and Knockouts champion is trying to drum up interest for something that's already in the works, and for a roster that lacks big names like Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, and Ronda Rousey, and one that'll soon need 30 women to compete in the Royal Rumble, 
bringing Victoria back could be best for business. More from WWE's women's division now as Lana is preparing for next week's Raw women's title match against Asuka in a very interesting way. On Twitter, Lana shared a photo of herself with Liv Morgan, the woman who once professed her love for Lana, and said that she's been drinking raw eggs and even vomited a bit, a confession that Morgan vouched for. Lana's husband Miro has compared her stance as an underdog to Rocky, so it makes sense she'd be drinking raw eggs, and time will tell whether the ravishing Russian's egg drinking proves to be the difference maker when she takes on the Empress of Tomorrow. Now it's no secret that CM Punk lives a straight-edge lifestyle, meaning he abstains from drinking drugs and smoking, but it's equally well known that Vince McMahon loves a challenge. During a Q&A for Hannibal TV, Chris Masters explained about a flight to the Middle East for tribute to the troops that saw the boss try to break the former world champion. He said, Vince was trying to peer pressure CM Punk into having a drink, and I wouldn't really know what to do either if I was CM Punk because part of me, maybe Vince is testing him to see if he could get CM Punk to break his will, and then that'll make Vince lose respect for him. The masterpiece added that when Punk refused, McMahon had him shoot fight Shelton Benjamin, and given his amateur wrestling credentials, it was the Hurt Business member who emerged on top. We have to admire Punk for sticking to his morals, even if that did result in him getting beat by Benjamin, and it's clear why these flights to the Middle East have often been called some of the wildest trips the company made. And we're ending today with news of The Undertaker and Kane, who are about to get much more attention out of the ring. According to Variety, there's an upcoming Brothers of Destruction documentary coming to the WWE Network, but instead of premiering on the network, it'll first be shown at Austin Film Festival. Fans in Austin will see the doc play on October 29th, the final day of the festival, whilst those with the network will have to wait until November 15th. The documentary in question will detail the pair's kayfabe brotherhood that began in 1997, and with never-before-seen conversations with both men, this should be an informative watch for any fan. The duo will also be part of 30 Days of the Dead Man, a month-long celebration of the phenom that'll take place next month so fans should expect to see more from The Undertaker and his kayfabe brother very soon.